did the presentation disappear for you, Arun Avesh? Or is it? Still I can on? see the big blue button that presentation. Okay, so it works only for me. Then I'll just change the slide to an empty slide. <laughs> so let that be there. That. Okay, so um, did uh, either of you want to show anything um, with your computer? Something cool? Who had promised to show something? It was Darren. Darren or? Uh, Okay, maybe Darren might join, maybe Darren might not. Um, yeah, start. I'll just notify the group so that. Uh, in case someone had planned to join, but just forgot the later. Um, Adesh, do you also want to join with microphone? Because this, this is the three of us, so it will be much easier for us all to talk. Also give uh, moderator access. Uh. Yeah, we can hear it now. Uh, okay, so uh, how, how do we do it? Uh, I'm assuming uh, uh, is, uh, is Adarsh or Arun, are you sh uh, showing off anything? Do you want to share your screen and show anything? Yeah, I think uh, I will show something. Yeah, you have something cool? Yeah, great, super. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll so. give uh, okay. so you should be able to share your screen okay. if, if that's what you wanted to you you want to share a screen right yeah because uh, I am currently uh, sorry I want to present something about internet archive super so uh, I've just uh, given you presenter access so a new button has come to share screen mm. on the bottom between ah, okay. mm, no minimize presentation no ah, okay okay share your screen okay. yeah Uh, can you see the Internet Archive website? Yes, Internet Archive. Okay. So uh, it's a organ non-profit organization uh, that um, its main uh, purpose is to preserve digital uh, materials in the online and also the preser preservation of old documents so that it can be publicly available. So. Here I want to tell something about this web archiving. So I will go to web. And if you want to uh, find uh, the, uh, for example, if you want to find the old version of Facebook, it can be found in the Wayback Machine. It's like a time machine in the internet. You can go to uh, the maybe 10 years back. How was the website looking like? Website. Okay, so I think Akshay is there is a website now. ASD of learning. Why are you trying to embrace me? No, uh, because I want to demonstrate some website now. 
<laughs> okay so yeah that that is one old website uh, it looks pretty much the same from long time yeah So it will be like uh, a timeline of all the years it can be seen here. So currently the website is looking like this and if you want to uh, check the uh, initial design of the website we can go to 2016 and we can click uh, any of the date uh, in which the snapshot of the website is taken and here also how the website is taken is also visible here alexa scroll alexa alexa scroll so when we click that so this was the initial design of that uh, of akshay's website interesting okay and then we can set some other websites also so, okay we can set google.com oh so many yeah. yeah so we can set 2002 so this uh, as it's very popular website it automatically gets archived Hey, others and Savitri, think of some uh, interesting website to go back in history, no? This payback tool is uh, very useful for research purposes because uh, we can search in the old news portals like that will be very useful. True. So this is what I think some okay. This is what Google outcome looks in two thousand two. Can you also uh, elaborate on uh, what you just said uh, when uh, news articles are missing? Uh, how, how does it work? Okay, so as I am uh, interested in politics, I will go to a Malayalam news web portal. Reporter TV. So the portal has been, I think it started in 2012, so we can check in 2014, we can uh, just visit the old events in the 2014 also, using this. Okay, so. It's like this um, uh, New York Times and all will post 18, 1899 or 1900. Uh, like, <laughs> like that, we can see. Yeah. Past. And uh, another uh, frequent use of Wayback Machine uh, uh, you, you are referring to is this uh, some pages get uh, lost, like they're removed from the internet. And uh, yeah, yeah. 
can see you can see that history yeah yeah and also in the web page there are features like and the outlinks can also be archived makes sense so if there's a link to a different uh, page that will also get saved yeah. right yeah. and uh, if i'm not mistaken we can also save a page like yeah. if there's a page yeah. that is not like we can yeah, yeah. in fact uh, 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 when you said research uh, i remember uh, in tobacco uh, research uh, health health related research on tobacco when people want to identify um, uh, interference by tobacco industry uh, in in health policy or anything related to uh, tobacco policy they have used uh, this tool so for example uh, in the past uh, company uh, so some industry tobacco company would uh, fund some project or would uh, uh, would would create some uh, campaign or document which, which includes either a lie or it will help uh, promote promote tobacco in some way things like that and uh, then uh, after two three months they would remove that link from their website so it's like it never happened but they've used uh, arcade.org to uncover some of these uh, things that happened in the past um, yeah. So in many in many places, Wayback Machine has been useful like that. Thanks a lot for bringing it up, Arun. Uh, uh, is there anything else you wanted to show off? Currently, uh, we are in 2014 webpage, and we can pick anything that can be relatable to us. So here, uh, the Indian Super League was started in 2014. So here, the news is we can see the news. Indian Super League oh, yeah. started. It's showing that Kolkata. Team one day in this operation. But the another thing that can be added to the internet archive is I think I don't think it, it will be technically technically feasible, but the videos cannot be seen. Like this, these are all videos, but it cannot be played. That. This one that can be solved in future. Okay. So, uh, archive archive.org does allow uploading videos manually, although it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't automatically scrape videos from the internet. Maybe because yeah. can upload <laughs> to Okay, Arun, uh, your 10 minutes is up. You started at uh, 9 4 or 9 5. Um, is there any other thing you wanted to show off, or shall we give Judah a chance? Uh, one more thing I can add just for the completion of all those things. We can uh, after the web page like this. Uh, when we click the web, we can see here save page now. If anyone want to archive a particular website, let's uh, just type the web page here uh, and URL here, and click page, and there will be options like uh, we can save the options and uh, all those things also. And just click page. This is the process of saving a uh, web page, archiving a web page. That's it, Akshay. Super. Thank you so much, uh, Arun. Uh, let me make a Judah presenter. Judah, do you want to share screen? Uh, how, what is your, uh, actually, let me take screen and come to the next slide. Ah, sorry. Hi. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what I have to do on the screen, actually? Uh, you wanted to share screen to show something in Excel related to Boolean coding for a research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, right. you must have cool, gotten cool. a button yeah. at the bottom to share screen. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll do it. I'll do it. I got it. Oh wait, can you guys see it? Yes, it's coming on the way. Can yeah, you guys uh, see something? 
for me uh, sfs screen something okay. is there uh, me tables gender male female and other genders missing religion hindu muslim christian others all of that okay cool okay um so basically i just want to take you through this uh, research that i've done and kind of some boolean coding that i've done in excel and um, what can you see currently what, what is the screen you can see you can see that uh, the social demographic screen details and some tables right name course age and years factors yes um, yes, I, exactly. So, so that is the people. purpose of the. Right. Uh, so basically, we want to find some sort of. We're taking up all the details of a group of uh, college students who are basically studying mainly commerce and psychology and things like that. We took a lot of their family, some family details, and some factors that could be risk factors and we kind of try to measure how much screen time they are using screen time is usage on any device device like tv computer laptop smartphone tablet or even the gaming um, devices and uh, you know whether they were uh, whether they were some they had some kind of addiction meaning if they stopped it did they feel like they they got moody some sort of withdrawal or some sort of or there was they, they spent more time on it than usual and if there was some sort of uh, depression or anxiety so that is in short is what the purpose of the study was and the capacity which i have been involved was in uh, data collection and in trying to fill something of the tables now the tables are uh, trying to uh, condense whatever the data we got into certain facts like how many people have some sort of withdrawal symptoms and who are addicted so th this basically tells us that we have to kind of uh, use you know some sort of intersection of data who has this and this so uh, now can you see the the excel sheet excel yes okay so in the the many rows and columns and in the columns we have basically t taken the parameters which we want to see like uh, course age gender religion living arrangements and uh, <clears throat> you can see here that i tried to um, do an automatic division of the social economic status according to the modified bg prasad scale so according to the modified bg prasad scale this is the kind of formula I used. Uh, if uh, you know, if 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 the the income per per head of the family is below something, then you give it some number. If it's if it's below another, uh, if it's between some other two numbers, it's you know I, I've coded it like that. So this this whole column is a is a shorthand for how rich or poor they are essentially and you see here that it's mostly around one or two so according to the scale they aren't most of the people here aren't that uh, you know well well off in that sense now i just want to skip all of this and uh, so now we i wanted to flag how many people have screen addiction and uh, so there's something called tau's criteria and in the, this is essentially tau's criteria which is trying to condense all of this data into how uh, are you how many people are preoccupied how many people are restless how many people need to use these devices and you know and what is the percentage so like that uh, each of the columns in order to just get a single number this is like the number of calculations one has to do so you know within a column how many people have a particular symptom and then the rest of the calculation is just to try and find the numerator and the de denominator and this is just double check if every number you know adds up to the total and then do a percentage so this whole table was just to get like a simple calculation uh, of the whole columns now now having got these numbers we want to it's like uh, i was told to do something that was that seemed initially kind of hard for me that is i had to flag each individual person who had addiction so that means 
within a given row with so much of this data i had to see if each which of these people you know of each one who had uh, addiction and that that was why so many of these tables were uh, so now so many of these tables were there so now what is the kind of details i have to go into finding of whether a person is addicted one is the total number of time they spent and total number of time you know i have to add up the different column uh, how many devices they use and then i have to double check if the if it fulfills a particular criteria which is if it fulfills greater than 6 hours that is 360 minutes if you see in the column and then i have to kind of just use this button when i write a formula here and i kind of just drag and drop the whole thing and i get yes the you know this person who is true does spend more than 6 hours on uh, you know the total screen time and this person spends the total so this is just one criteria which i had to you know a single criteria now the next criteria which i wanted to check was the weekly average uh then you know what is the preoccupation and then and then withdrawal and then i have to see preoccupation and withdrawal and then you can see if if one column is fulfilling a criteria and if another column is fulfilling a criteria then uh, you know true and false and mm. uh, the main reason why i'm trying to show this is because i feel like there may be an easier way i feel like i did it the 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 longest possible way but it it made sense to me because i was kind of i was like working on the smallest scale i was seeing you know if each individual person fulfilled a certain criteria and i was kind of mixing with and and or if something and something is there or some or if something or something else is there like either either of like um, there has to be withdrawal and preoccupation and there has to be a greater than 6 uh, hours of time spent on any device and any one of these things either tolerance or you know persistent desire or continue ex- uh, excessive use so if if all of these criteria are fulfilled in this complex way only then can we say you know is this is this person have screen addiction and then mm. you know this whole thing uh, will have to be uh, f- formulated and then you know you can calculate how many of the total people who are screen addicted and uh, you know count how many people in the whole column are true and now we have just done the work for screen addiction now we want to see if a person is has screen addiction and has depression and has something else so you know now now just for i'll i'll show you now this is just one table which i wanted okay i wanted to fill in the details for uh, you know what is the age uh, the age cut offs and you know how many people within that age cut off is screen addicted how many people and uh, how many what is the proportion of people who are um, screen addicted and male and the proportion of people who are screen addicted and female and only then can we do something called a p value which i haven't completely understood but i've done all of the grunt work in order to get the data required to do the p value analysis so for that i have to calculate how many people have screen addiction and less than you know 20 years so i have to see if both the columns are true I have to see by people who are screen addiction and 21 so you see how much of kind of computation is going to check each individual cell whether it's fulfilling multiple criteria and then i have to uh, do a you know addition i have to count how many people are true in fulfilling a particular uh, criteria and this is all just see look at the amount of calculation this is all the amount of like i say it's a simple boolean calculation as far as excel is concerned but all of this is just to get this one table of how many people who have screen addiction and fulfill a particular criteria and like that multiple tables uh, you know i made multiple tables and just were carefully selecting whether these uh, criteria were met and screen addiction was true so that's basically uh, my experience in using uh, boolean data and calculation in excel i feel like i've done it the the uh, long way but i understood what i was doing so the only thing i would like to know if if there was a better or easier way using some sort of uh, loops or something like that in order to have, have got this work done so that's basically uh, concludes my presentation 
any questions or anything mm -hmm. Super, Judah. Uh, hey, other Sharon, uh, Savanita, you have not joined with microphone, so you can use chat. But other Sharon, if you want to tell something or ask something, that you have one minute. <laughs> sure. So uh, I wanted to say that uh, this is a super neat example of what computers can do because. Uh, uh, before computers, I suppose this would be a very manual process where someone sits right. and goes through each record and does exactly what you did, but without a formula, without auto filling the formula from first column and first row to last row. So, uh, right. uh, and uh, I also wanted to say, I mean, um, the the way you have done it is exactly mm -hmm. how um, it would be done in a neat way because. Uh, if you try to uh, make a loop or make a function which would be reusable for all of this, it would make mm -hmm. it so complicated that uh, you okay. would not be able to verify the logic. And uh, okay, with okay. research and stuff like that, correctness is more important than smartness Correct. or uh, <laughs> or being very okay. uh, very very small code or all of that. So. Uh, the 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 right. uh, uh, you know uh, good programmers will try to find a small uh, a smallest way to uh, achieve something or the cutest way to achieve something. But uh, great right. programmers will <laughs> will write uh, the most correct <laughs> way to achieve. Something. So <laughs> so yeah, that uh, I so to thank point out. thank you. Uh, the reason uh, why I want to show this was because actually I had a like a lot of people telling me to use SPSS and uh, I had some kind of idea of how code coding was used in SPSS and uh, I kind of just wanted to sh share an, uh, like the SPSS code also. Uh, oh yeah, you have that? Can you show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Syntax. So. Let, uh, let me just find a way how to stop the screen sharing and start again. Select window. You, or you, you did uh, the same thing in both SPSS and uh, spreadsheet? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, I was supposed to do this on SPSS, but I wasn't like the, the like it wasn't intuitive for me. Like I didn't exactly know what I was doing. And uh, I, like I prefer to have a more hands on approach to the data. Like I understood what I was doing when I was doing it the long way. But in SPSS, there was like too much of uh, facilities and too much of things that I kind of lost my way in the smartness of that uh, thing. So I preferred to, you know, look at the data, see how I can, uh, if there was problems and what exactly the, like I felt it was more, uh, like I, I can see what is happening and I, I'm more hands-on kind of thing. Actually, let, let me just see how I can, analysis stuff. Is it analysis stuff? No, no, no. One second, trying to open this. Uh... So you technically get another 10 minutes because you're showing another cool thing. So <laughs> no, 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 it's just going to be another two minutes. It's just opening up. Actually, my computer is lagging a lot. Uh, if anyone has something else, uh, I can come back to this later. Yeah, others, Arun, Savanita, did you have anything to show off? I don't I know you already showed one thing. I sound like you are joined via microphone now. Do you want to say something? Yeah. No, no, nothing. Uh, whatever Judah said, right? Uh, I also use the same thing for my research analysis as well. So I do agree that especially now Google Sheet makes things far more easier to analyze rather than SPSS. So yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I think uh, while Judah is uh, sharing the screen, I wanted to uh, bring to the attention. There was a time when uh, the the spreadsheet software 
would uh, not be able to perform so many calculations at once because see for one number in judas last table uh, it actually has to compute um, like 3000 i don't know how many other cells so uh, uh, there were there was a time when uh, if you had such a huge uh, dependency where one cell would depend on 100 other cells and those 100 cells would depend on another 200 cells then the entire computer would crash <laughs> And then uh, apparently this is story of uh, uh, Lotus. Uh, I mean, Microsoft Excel became a success because it it came up with a way to solve such programming challenges very fast, and uh, that's how it became a <laughs> household tool these days. Yes, uh, we can see SPSS now. So actually, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I mean, see, this is apparently this is called the the syntax. So, if you if you copy the code down in so the thing is in SPSS, you can. Uh, I have no idea what is happening actually. You know, hmm. apparently you can just copy this thing, and you can paste it in in some sort of like run run this code. Okay, let's see what happens when we run this, and. Uh, Okay, wait. Let me let, let me select the whole thing and run it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we get we get this whole data set and all of this. Uh, mm, but we have to apply this to a data set. Mm. <laughs> I kind of forgot how to do all this. But basically, what's happening is SPSS has this op this thing too do the coding in which we can say that what is the frequency okay and and give you the uh, thing without necessarily you know doing any boolean or thing like it's basically some automatic uh, thing where we say just analyze this what is the descriptive statistics i want frequencies over here and i want to know how many people are uh, uh, let me just open the file i don't know where this is Oh yeah, that's it. Actually, I I, I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I didn't prepare to show the SPSS thing, so actually, I'm completely lost. But uh, all I want to say is that, uh, yeah, I have no idea how to use SPSS, and it's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I thank you so much. Huh. Uh, so with um, Google Sheets, right, or uh, any of Microsoft Excel. Yeah. Are you able to do just descriptive analysis or you are talking about p-value, right? All of those analytical stuffs also are you able to figure out with Google Sheets? I don't know the de the, de the details of how a person calculates uh, a p-value. If I knew that, then I feel like I could probably, you know, just uh, replicate that on a cell or, you know, on Excel. I feel like I could do that if I knew the details of a p-value. Okay, but you, uh, you I, I suppose it would be much easier. Yeah, like so in Excel, then you'll have to put what p value would mean. That formula you'll have to put mm. f to the main row, right? That's what you're saying. Right. Okay. Hmm. So uh, uh, I will just add uh, one thing, uh, Judah. The the frustration that you had when you were trying to do something with SPSS and then. Uh, you're not uh, finding the right syntax or uh, you're not uh, finding uh, what to do that that is exactly how uh, one feels uh, i mean having uh, i have gone through some uh, i'm not with spss but with say r or with python or with many programming languages it feels exactly that way uh, for everyone at the uh, beginning of any new programming language even if uh, they are already programming in one or two languages including Microsoft Excel. Uh, the next time they're picking up a new tool, it's all changed because uh, you know the logic, you know that this Boolean and this Boolean has to get multiplied, but uh, it's a different layout. It's uh, it's in some other menu. Uh, the syntax is different. The way you write code is different. So uh, after, uh, after a while, you uh, start realizing, OK, uh, I just have to learn this particular syntax and then that's what I need. So you know exactly what you're looking for, and then you can search online for that particular stuff, and it becomes easier. So, and that comes to the second point of, oh, can we do this in Google Sheets? 
the question would be how do we apply the t test uh, t test function in google sheet is there a t test function in google sheet so we will immediately be searching okay t test in google sheet or uh, p value in google sheet so uh, i think uh, there is a recurring pattern there so thank you so much for bringing that up uh, we have uh, around 20 minutes left so uh, unless anyone else has another presentation i will show uh, what i was thinking i would show shall i oh i just i just realized i had something cool to show i had something cool to show so i'll just give back on okay uh, tell me if it makes sense so there's this programming language called chuck okay and chuck is basically this programming language for music so you could basically like input like the frequencies and the duration and you could essentially uh code music like to the computer you could tell the so does that sound cool i i i, I coded the twinkle twinkle little star a long time back hey do you have that can you play it yeah 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 let me just uh so if I put the microphone, it'll 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 play through the microphone, right? Uh yeah, it should. Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, so I have sure. like. Four. Okay, so okay, this is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Let me see if I can share my screen also. Wait, is it? Yeah, playing? if you don't oh, share. Oh, have, have Ah, right, right, right. Okay. Um, one second. Oh, this is going to be epic. Hey, what happens if we keep on? Does the screen crash if we if I just share the blue button screen or something like that? Like there'll be windows in the windows and the kind of thing, no? Yeah, you just show a uh, infinite uh, this thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, let me know. Actually, see the problem is we stop sharing. A uh, block. Allowed. Show window. Okay, yes, mini article. So, can you see this? And it's just loading. Yeah, mini article. Can you see the code here? Uh, sign or so it's not very clear. Maybe I if I make it full screen. Yeah, if I make it full screen, I can see. So. Uh, this is basically what we're doing is recording sine sine waves. So sine waves are like uh, in, in music is basically like each sound we hear is actually a particular frequency of air molecules. It's called a hertz. We calculate that in cycles of you know uh, vibrating air molecules. So it's easy for computers to simulate that. So here, what I've done is I I want a sine. Uh, a sine wave and I'm giving it some uh, you know I'm, I'm assigning it some value and then I'm giving it a particular volume a particular pitch a particular frequency and then I'm saying it, I want it for this duration so I'll just see if I can uh, play it how do I play if I have play this oh wait virtual machine how do I do this Console. Okay, I guess I didn't prepare this. But basically, can I play this? See the check menu. Uh, no. yes. Start virtual machine. Oh, yeah, it's add shared. Okay. Pretty cool, no? Did you hear that? Hey, I had to resist my urge to sing along. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> uh, and there were a couple of other examples. There's this example where, which, which, which is just trying to show, like how we have a single line of code, and you know, using loops and using randomness, you can essentially have an infinite uh, song. It is. It, it's not melodic, 
but it's near infinite so it's like pure computer music so that's the code and this is not something i made but this is like the power of the language and this language is called chuck pretty cool right nice. so, yeah. i believe uh, these are all um, uh, tools that come under creative coding and uh, uh, there are some other tools i mean uh, like chuck there are some languages like ada and uh, some many more and uh, also there are some which produces graphics uh, just like sound uh, creative graphics and uh, and then there are some which uh, combines graphic and sound so uh, uh, that interesting field of creative programming uh, thanks for showing us that as well sure mm-hmm. and do send uh, resources when about that uh, what you were talking about yes uh so i am taking presenter back uh unless someone else just remembered something else to show um i've been trying to find that uh, neat article about uh, how they solved the speed issue with spreadsheet but if i find it i'll send it later um uh yeah okay so let me share my screen uh uh I, I was thinking uh, what to show today, and uh, I was thinking uh, I, I like to build websites. So uh, why not show an easy way to build a website? Uh, that that's what I'm thinking. Uh, can you see my Google Docs uh, screen? Yes, yes, because yes, thanks. So uh, th- th- this is uh, this is uh, uh, the the most easy way to build a website that i have found recently uh, so i have opened a google document um, um i also wanted to add a okay i'll talk about that later so let me call this purposeful programming and uh, i'm gonna say so i mean everyone knows how to use google uh, docs uh, so i'm i have a title now so just a, a couple of things about google docs i i wouldn't want to make this bold with selecting it and making it bold and all that uh, there's always a shortcut so format paragraph style title uh, would be the right way to do it i mean uh, you can do that here also title so that is there and i want it center aligned and uh, this this uh, then i'm going to say uh, uh an online experiment on learning computers and then i'm going to say uh, we started uh, this on when did we start this 30th july or something um now we are already showing off cool stuff like uh what is it chuck uh spss uh, Wayback machine, etc. Uh, I actually wanted a participant list here. Uh, I was thinking we'll have some time to create a Google form and uh, uh, fill it out and then copy paste that here. But I'm gonna short circuit that uh, and just create a sheet of my own <laughs> and uh, uh, so purposeful program participants so i'm gonna say name place and i have uh akshay Yuda, uh, arun join first arun adarsh Yuda, savinita uh, savitri also was there who else was there uh, okay so um this this can also come from a uh uh spread uh, google form like if i if i created a form and uh forms and i asked uh, that the results be stored in a sheet uh it would come there so uh, if we have time we, we can do that but basically uh, just imagine that this came from 
uh, Arun, where are you from? Uh, Adarsh Yudha. Can you all tell me? I'm from Adarsh Yudha. Trishur. And Adarsh. No, Savitri is not here. Right. Adarsh has put Alapura. Okay. Uh, let's say Savitri is from Varda. Now, uh, we can do, uh, so, I mean, this is just uh, Excel coding. So I'm just going to say, I mean, uh, Excel formula. I'm going to say uh, is equal to me and one second. Let me make the screen size bigger. Okay, equal to me and who is from and C. Then uh, I have that. And I will just copy that, paste it here with a link to the spreadsheet so that if I add someone, I can come. I mean, it will show up. And uh, I wanted to also remove the how do I remove the border? Your properties. Uh, I don't know how to remove the border. Oh, take off the color. Uh, here it is. So here it is. Oh. Is it? Okay, which one do we choose? It didn't help a lot. Uh, anyhow, yeah, uh, we could maybe change the color also. Correct. Uh, color. Table border. Yeah, that became white. Okay, there's no transparent. Anyhow, uh, now uh, we have that, and then we'll say where do we method? Method is what? Uh, so I'm pressing Control Alt and two to make it second heading. So I like to organize uh, Google Docs with this outline so that uh, I can quickly jump to the right section. And uh, the way to do that is to give it a proper as a heading one, heading two, heading three. So like that. So you can just press Control Alt two, uh, which you can see by looking here. So you can see Control Alt two applies heading two. Control R3 apply setting three, so like that. Now method is so we uh, come together every Sunday at 9 p.m. IST and spend an hour discussing computers. Now let's close this. Now uh, this uh, this actually looks like a paper. So oh, there is another setting that Google just added, uh, which you might know page setup we can change it to pageless document uh, with the background color also so i'm going to give a fancy color <laughs> uh, okay so that color breaks this one anyhow let's let it stay so uh, now we have a google doc this is just a regular stuff right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to download this as uh, so you might already know that if we download this as a pdf we can get a pdf out of it or we can download it as a doc x so i'm going to download this as a web page uh, dot html dot zipped so uh, okay i already have tried it once uh, purposeful programming website uh, it's there there it is it's a zip file so i'll just extract it uh, is my other screen visible no right uh, I'll just repeat what I did on the other screen. So I it got downloaded to my folder. So I unzipped it. I mean, uh, I extracted it. And then there's this folder. And uh, there's this HTML file. So the, the, uh, there is something about file extensions that unless you already know, uh, these are all different files. This is a zip file, which means it's a compressed file. This is a folder. 
and then there's an HTML file. An HTML hypertext markup language file can be opened with a browser. So I'm just gonna come back to my other screen now. Um, share the screen. I can actually share my entire screen tag. Does that work? Uh, can, can you still see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Okay, so, uh, so I just opened that and uh, you can see it's a uh, it's opened in my browser and it is a uh, it's it opens in the browser now the next thing is to put this online right like we do not have a, a url i can't share this particular url to you it won't come up uh, in your computer so i will just uh, use uh, a website called netlify uh, netlify is i mean there are so many uh, websites where you can do this, but I'm just using a random one. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, so I've already logged in. Uh, I'm gonna say add a new site uh, manually. And they're asking drag and drop your site output folder here. So uh, I'm gonna browse that file. Docs. It's called purpose for my website. So uh, one small change I have to do is I have to rename this to, oh sorry, uh, rename this to index.html. Uh, now this folder I'm going to upload, load. Okay, so it'll take just about 20, 30 seconds to deploy that. Uh, I think open prediction. Yes, so now we have a uh, address. Where is the address? This is the address. So we have put this entire uh, thing online, uh, and I'm just going to share that link in uh, our group. Uh, you can see that we built a website, it took around 10 minutes i think uh, but uh, that's that's uh, that's all it takes to create a website these days so if you do not already have a website and uh, if you don't know how to make a website this might be a very easy way to start of course if you are actually going to do uh, make a website uh, there are better ways we can uh, we can talk about that another day um, and I'm going to say this URL is not really good. Uh, so this address uh, is not really good. We can add an address like purpose of programming.com, but for that, I'll have to pay a registrar and get by that address. So uh, I'm not paying that for now. Um, yeah, an another thing we could have done is if we had a Google form, uh, and collected that uh, responses in a sheet, we could have automatically, like, I could have sent it to the group and 20 people could have entered the names and uh, addresses and then uh, it would have all come up uh, at once. So that that uh, is another thing. Uh, now, if you have uh, something that you want to put online uh, uh, and uh, you want, you want a dedicated address for that. Uh, you don't want it to be just on a Facebook page or a Twitter page, but you want it to be on a proper website. Then uh, this is, uh, I mean, then this is something that uh, can be considered. Uh, I don't, the address will not change. Uh, so Netlify will save this address. It will just update the same address. Uh, but uh, ideally, yeah, ideally we should have a more, Memorable address. This is Starlet Meerkat FFE 457. It's not really a good uh, name for a website. Anyhow, so uh, that is my 10 minutes also, I think. Uh, what uh, we can do now is we can have a small discussion for the next four minutes to figure out what to do in the next uh, session. Uh, is that a good idea? Sounds cool. 
So uh, uh, what we thought earlier was uh, early module one is possibilities of computers. I think we did some of that today. I mean, we can of course uh, do uh, another session with some more cool stuff. Uh, like Darren wanted to show something off uh, and things like that. Uh, should, should we do basics of computers next week? Uh, which would be things like uh, what is a motherboard, what is a CPU, what happens once we press a switch on a computer, um, what is RAM, what is a hard disk, solid state device. Basically, I think uh, it would be a, a very uh, basic session in, in that it, it, it need not be just to basic we can talk about the philosophy and stuff underneath all that but also it's about uh, the uh, hardware and the and the physics of how electronics becomes uh, computer science is that a okay topic or should we choose something uh, should we come from the other end should we start with programming should we build a website manually or should we do some uh, Big, uh, some programming interactive programming project that that's the thing i wanted to discuss uh, should we come from bottom up or should we come from top down from hardware i think it will be good bottom up. Uh, by bottom up you mean like let us learn programming and then like see how the how why uh uh, no, by, why there some uh, by, no, by bottom up, I mean, let's first look at what a computer is, what is this hardware, how does electricity become logic, that kind of uh, input, output, uh, all that, and then go up to program. Uh, I had a doubt, clarification, like in the history of uh, specifically, say, digital computing, um, what were the, uh, what drove the innovation of computer technology was it like limitations in uh, computer programming because first there were like you know some sort of cards that need to be punched and there were different engines you know very programming simple binary logic for additions and things like that so was it uh, obviously the the technological progress kind of uh, made things better but I, I think if we are focusing on how um, programming works could we like see the basics of programming like in the history of programming and focus on that and see how hardware relates to that specifically rather than you know just a complete overview like a little bit more specifics on how uh, how programming can uh, how programming is associated with uh, basics of computers makes sense if i understand you correctly what you're saying is let's look at uh, the basics or even the history of historical basics of computers by through the lens of how programming is and how programming is defined, limited, designed around, and also, uh, yeah, I mean, shaped by this particular um, history or uh, the, the basics of how a computer works, right? Yes. Mm, yes, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think any discussion on computers will, uh, uh, with with an idea that we will get into programming, we'll have to take that exact course you suggested. Um, so, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, there is a very good uh, uh, curriculum and uh, uh, open educational resource by Harvard or MIT, one of these colleges on the very basics of uh, how binary works, Boolean logic and all of that, uh, that I'll share in the group just like that, uh, with no expectation that anyone would have time to read through all, go through all of that. But uh, just so that if someone has the time and interest and uh, energy, they can go through it. And then when we meet next week, we will just, uh, uh, by then I'll think about how to do it the best way. We will uh, we will look at uh, some of these uh, topics: binary, uh, punching card. What what does what is the connection within a card with holes in it to to the computers that we use to the 
to the mobile phones and all that. Uh, so that kind of a connection we can draw uh, from that. Yeah, I think that was uh, great. That's that's it uh, for today. I think. Uh, I also had one more doubt. Yes, we we can uh, of course. I mean, I said that's it, just so that people can leave. It's ten o'clock already. Uh, but if you want to stay back, please feel free to stay back <laughs> and talk. Let's good. talk. For... Hello. Yeah. Hi. Thank yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, if we can keep it hands on, you know, I feel it'll be better for us to just learn it rather than if it's just uh, just talking about something. I don't know how you'll plan to do it for the next uh, class, but. Correct, correct. So uh, I have to uh, make a lesson plan which uh, which will keep adult learning principles of need for hands on learning in mind. Yes. Let's see. If you have any suggestions yeah. on what to do, that would be great. But uh, I, mean, I am not. Uh, I don't know. Any if, yeah, this can be done. Like right now on that whiteboard, right? Uh, there are two of them who are already just uh, scribbling something, right? So, and uh, today Judah spoke about all of those Boolean operators. Some people might be completely unfamiliar with it, right? So, when you share a Google Doc, if you can like give them access beforehand, uh, we. Even we can, you know, type in those uh, formulas and it'll be learning for all of us. That's one suggestion. I think Google makes it most interactive when compared to Microsoft. Hmm. Oh, yeah, like, but, a, like a collaborative talk. Yeah, exactly. Like just giving it, uh, changing the access to everybody. Hmm. Which yeah, talk yeah. are you talking about? Actually, one thing you should do, Judah, is uh, if you have time and energy, uh, to write a blog post about what you any of the or all of the <laughs> topics you just uh, discussed, because uh, that's uh, one way to share learnings also, and you can put the uh, code or formula, all of that in that also. I mean, it's something you can consider. Uh, fair, but. Fair, uh... Yeah. Are you saying? No, I was saying for the next session, uh, I uh, I will think about uh, how to make it most interactive. Cool. Another doubt I had, which is not exactly in line with uh, this whole concept of programming, is um, what exactly is the scope of analog computing? Like people are talking about, you know, Arduino and Raspberry Pi and things like that, and uh, there is some amount of you know programming and analog computing and I wanted to know if because now everyone's saying that uh, the power of computing is too much with regards to uh, programming computers and uh, you know the sometimes these analog uh, computers are used in these really high AI levels so what exactly if, if it's too much beyond the scope what exactly the scope of analog computing and can we have like some sort of a uh, uh, a digital analog hybrid or can analog computers do exactly the same thing that uh, digital computers do is it is it possible like on that that's my question hmm i have uh, not much of an idea what an analog computer would be or uh, my my idea of what analog computers are is that these were very old and that digital uh, obsoletes them or makes it uh, unnecessary. But uh, I have to read about whether that's a, uh, I mean, whether there are ways to make it useful today that digital does cannot do. Like my, my idea is that, uh, I mean, my understanding is that digital can do everything that analog can do and better or, or more. So, so analog is not useful, is my idea. Uh, I will read up about it. Hello, sir. Akshay. Hello, sir. Yeah, I was saying, uh, you just call me Akshay, but yeah, Adarsh. So, analog computers are using the combination of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So, all the computers are based on the function of these three components when it comes to the digital instead of this we are using the transistors 
so that makes the difference transistors are more efficient more fast more accurate i don't think mm. it will be possible to combine both of these but i don't think there is a use of that because that efficiency will be less than that digital only computers if we combine analog and digital together correct i i also think so juda uh, do you have any uh, articles or videos anything where the uh, where you, that uh, is explained as in why to bring so yeah back? yes so apparently uh, that's exactly the same title uh, veritasium put up recently you know why analog computers are coming back and the specific uh, example that he gave was in the concept of these uh, neural networks for identification of uh, uh images and things like that so uh, now there's some sort of a 64 layer of, uh, neural network that's based on this analog computers uh that gives the the, the, the main difference is that in when we use di digital computers we get an exact value because it's based on binary so the calculation is exact but in analog computers there's a, some sort of an error uh, some sort of an error because it tries to it tries to replicate the actual phenomenon to its circuitry so it it's not, it doesn't give you an exact variable but it gives you like uh, with some error but uh, if you if you put if you connect more and more of these analog circuits together it is possible to kind of uh, get a, a a answer which is faster and more computation efficient than digital computers that that's basically why i asked that question but uh Yeah, makes sense. Uh, in the sense, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, very tasim. I will Google that and uh, put a link. Um, but basically, uh, the property of binary and digital uh, is actually also limiting in certain sense. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, if not analog, the other kind of computers coming up is quantum computers, where uh, uh, you are using the property of quantum. physics and i I'm, i don't know anything about that but basically i had a friend who was trying to explain this to me uh they 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 can do calculations in a different manner altogether it's just like you said uh, it's not definite there is a probabilistic a parallel of... computing correct so they can do things in parallel they can do uh, they can they can simulate the probabilistic nature of uh, things and if uh, I, i mean and people are building it like there was a photo that was going around yesterday about a computer scientist working on a quantum computer um, and uh, google is building it amazon is building it a lot of people are building it so um, some of these uh, alternate ways of uh, looking at computers uh, are becoming more uh, uh, like maybe 30 years or i don't know <laughs> the speed of computer development it could be 5 years uh, but uh, uh, suddenly there could be a lot of different kinds of computers uh, not just digital ones not just binary ones at least